If these walls could talk, what story will they tell? From the kids who enjoy their years there, from the homeless person who didn't have a place to live, what story will they tell from the drug addicts and drug users and dealers? The story that it could tell is being told if you look closely at the art. The building had been vacant since at least the early 1980s. The building was a haven for drugs and crime. All kind of prostitution, drug sales. A lot of trash, a lot of debris, a lot of damage. Every single surface had some type of graffiti on it. Your initial gut reaction is, oh my gosh, we gotta tear this apart. school is on the National Registry and so we wanted to preserve the building in the neighborhood. Help USA is committed to providing affordable, decent housing. They have partnered with us to make sure that we're collectively working to address the housing crisis in, in, in a city that has a desperate need for affordable housing. We sat down and met with the Housing Authority to talk about any potential land that they had that was available for us to do another project and they brought the school building up. It's really sort of a remarkable looking building. So we worked with the Housing Authority and negotiated a long-term lease, and then went about securing the financing. The community was very supportive of the fact that we were gonna renovate the building because it really was the last big blighted structure in that part of the neighborhood. Every kid who grew up in the project went to this school. Went to this school, that's and, right. And and to see it refurbished and re brought back to life is a blessing. They were also happy that we were doing it as affordable because a lot of the long-term residents are, were feeling like they were starting to be pushed out of the neighborhood. School buildings in particular uh, make a lot of sense for, for, for affordable housing. Classrooms they are generally a really good size for an apartment. So without having to deconstruct the historic properties of a building, you can take that space and reuse it. They have a huge sense of pride for providing really, really great housing for people that can't afford it otherwise. My name is Karen Hunter. I was in the United States Army for 17 years. I got hurt while I was in, and uh, it was a good tour, and I think they're taking good care of us now. I hope they do more projects like this. This closet is where the teacher said, go get some paper or crayons or whatever. I replaced the pens and pencils in the books with flour, sugar, and salt and pepper. This right here used to be the petition that separated classrooms from another classroom. Look at that, Anthony. Now he probably lives around the corner as an old man right now. You can see the history here. All of this is original, even this here. All that's original. I'll never forget this. Never. This was the basketball setup. We ran four courts this way, and we ran it this way. Here, these are gates I touched more than 50-something years ago. Isn't this incredible? Years and time changes. Structures change. But I'll tell you one thing about this spring garden structure. It's solid. It's for life. It's for life. It's going to always be here. It's a tough mix to figure out how to grow without forgetting your history and how to grow without having too much change. I think that more funding for adaptive reuse and, and preservation would be welcome.